now you do better you can start right now no problem okay so good evening everyone it's a pleasure to be back again this sunday and uh, i want to welcome our speaker mr murli menon who has very kindly agreed to uh, give a talk before this circle the study circle and uh, i want to extend a very warm welcome to mr murli menon for this and uh, mr menon is going to talk to us on a topic family a unit of limited relationship uh, mr menon has is spoken before this group earlier so i don't need to formally introduce him but he is associated with the valley school for a long time and uh, so you can take maximum maybe an hour or so and then uh, for the next 25 30 minutes after your talk we can have the question answer session so you can unmute yourself and uh, begin the talk thank you unmute today 15th of may is the international day of families this day is observed as the international day of families for more than two decades now this is founded by united nation to honor the importance of families but for most of us suddenly starting to observe one day as a day of families is strange because we have always considered that families are most important today is also observed as a special day of vrat shri satyanarayana vrat shri satyanarayana puja or vrat is associated with marriage family and home in the culture of this part of the world so today seems to be a day of families or day for families all over the world people believe that a happy family is necessary and family is the building blocks of the society is this a happy family just a hope and wish isn't it that the idea of family worldwide is undergoing changes is that the reason why united nations initiated the observance of the international day of families in this last two decades families according to the united nation are both traditional and non traditional and both are the foundations of the society what is a family what is the traditional and non traditional aspect of a family almost everyone across the world consider that a family comprises of a father mother and children there can be different types of families a unit family an extended family or a joint family or a blended family or a family by choice most of us are familiar with joint families extended families and of course the nuclear families blended families and family by choice are upcoming trends in this part of the world also particularly in metros these upcoming trends are quite different from the traditional concept of a family 
if we were to ask a child, what is a family? What will be the response? They can express easily through drawings. So give a paper and pencil and see. Invariably, the drawing has a man, a woman, a child, and a house. Most of us also do the same. Our concept of a family is also similar. Is it because we are childish? Are we aware of the demographics of marriage and families in different areas of the world? Different people are caught in different patterns of families. Are you aware of it? Isn't that so? The International Day of Families on 15th of May today is an occasion to reflect on the work started by the United Nations and also to celebrate the importance of families, people, society, and cultures around the world. So on this special day, I would like to explore this, that is families, along with the pointers suggested by the teachings. So this topic is chosen for today. Family, a unit of limited relationship. This is a sentence from K. This is also strange for most of us. The majority of the world population, if not all, believe that family means relationship. What is your thoughts on this? I've often heard young couples referred as Lakshmi and Narayana. And it is so beautiful to listen in that way or Radha and Krishna. I do feel that way on the day of marriage, for sure. This is our cultural conditioning, perhaps. Like all of us, we want couples to live ever happily and children born to them to double the joy for everyone. In fact, the opinion surveys all over the world show that people believe marriage is the institution capable of bringing such strong families. But that marriage as an institution has lots of do's and don'ts. People find it difficult sometimes. In this country, which is ancient and traditional, the institution of marriage is quite strong. And the family appears happily living. The Western world, especially European countries, it is not so. There is a drop in marriage, almost 30% in the recent decades. They have substituted the word cohabiting for marriage. This again may be strange for most of us, but this is a fact. How are you looking at this fact of life? Soon, some of your children will also be telling you the advantages of cohabiting instead of getting into a marriage. Maybe they are already familiar. I mean the youth in our families. The terms like living in relationship or open relationship. Are you waiting for such a situation to happen? in your home.
Are you waiting? And in the meanwhile, just continuing prayers with vrat, puja, offering services in a church, mosque, or whatever. So family, the word is loaded now. You see the symbol of International Day of Families consists of a solid green circle with an image in red. The image consists of elements of simple drawings of a heart and a house. There is no human beings in that. This is to indicate that families are the center of society and provide a stable and supporting home for people of all ages. Aren't we good families already? Aren't we happily bonded and related in our families? Or that is just an outward show. We are putting it up as a happily living family. Is it possible to examine honestly, not bringing ideas and ideals? I think that the record is different. Early this week, a friend called up saying that her younger sister is happy in the second marriage. What happened in the first marriage? Nobody is really interested in examining the facts and learning. We are too quick with blame games. This case was referred as a breakup due to economic reasons. The United Nations is also concerned a lot about the economics and livelihoods. The United Nations want to ensure jobs and equal opportunity for all genders. I think already we don't have any more mothers to take care of children. Everybody want to earn. Maybe United Nations is concerned about many, many countries. It is not really possible. Maybe it is so true in India also. Krishnaji, on the other hand, says, I would like to quote, quote begins, the family is not a mere economic unit and any effort to solve the issue on that level must obviously fail, quote ends. Aren't we dependent on the economics in our living? Without that, what are we? What is our family? The business of gender equality or equality in general is also very strange. This is another key point in the activities of United Nations or any government policy. Last year, May 15th, we had the same day celebrated and the theme for that day was families and technologies. Because we were under the spell of COVID-19 and everybody had stayed back in homes and everything was happening online. In India, the digital divide was obvious. During that new normal period, Only 35% of population in India had the access to the technology. 
I don't think we have addressed the challenge. So one year we were talking about technology and there was a lot of effort from United Nations and a lot of awareness, campaigns, meetings. This year, the theme for the International Day of Families is family and urbanization. Maybe there is a lot of awareness programs planned on this topic, but the challenge for the families, will that end or that is only going to continue? I'm not being pessimistic, but wanted to bring out the limitation of ideas and thoughts. Will there be an equality among the members of the family, whether they are male or female, whether they are young or old, whether they are earning or not earning, whether they are so-called educated or not educated, what is going to bring that equality? Is that possible through legislation and policies? Look at our own family. It's not different from the families anywhere in the world. So as we are saying, listening, can we really see these pointers Krishnaji is suggesting in our own families? We are limited. We may be knowing a lot about the whole world and even the universe, but our world is actually very, very small. Our lives are around few people and things. We feel connected to those people and things around us. They are our parents, siblings, spouse, children, home, furniture, car, bank balance, etc. Et this feeling of connection is our attachment. This is what we think as relationship. We are possessing the members and the things and feel secured by them possessing us. We think that is relationship, that is love. This very attachment is binding us and hurting us and limiting us. Not a single day passes without the disturbing news of domestic violence and abuse. Family, is it a unit of conflicts? Whether we agree or not, I think it is so. The other day I was chatting with a child. I'm, a, I'm her friend. So she felt free to vent her feelings. Why should children have to have so much of pent up feelings and feel the need for venting it out? I'm sure that they are not having a happy home neither the society they live is happy. Nobody cares for them. Everyone is full of themselves. Everyone is after power and success. And everyone is clever and assertive. And everyone is dominating. 
and children are more likely to be sidelined and affected. So this little one told me how their parents were fighting the other day and how the words were so scary and shocking. So I asked, what did you do? She said she hid herself in the bathroom and cried for a long time. I don't think that the adults see that the family is actually a unit of conflicts. According to many, fighting in the family is normal. Probably they are concerned the other family living next door should not know that. They also have different kinds of solutions for their fights. But each of them have conflicting solutions. They are not able to come to terms together. So a new war begins soon. Krishnaji points out that the relationship of unity, sorry, let me come back again. Krishnaji po points out, the quote begins, the relationship of utility is based on violence. The family as a means of mutual inward security makes for conflict and confusion. What is your views on this, sirs? Looking at the family life, the relationship, are you satisfied or are you contented? I think sometimes Krishnaji uses these two words differently. Is it possible to explore the facts, the naked facts of our family living? If we are going to reproduce what K said or what just we think out of the hat, then there is no dialogue. It is merely a discussion. Maybe many are happy with discussions, solutions, answers, and just questions. Maybe we can ask challenging questions today. How do we take this further? If we are not asking the right questions, the discussion is going to be superficial. So is it possible to ask the right questions? Looking at the actual, real, not so happy family we are in, day in and day out. Do we have the vitality to explore? Are we going to say that I'm old? Let my children find out what they want to do. Is that a right response to the challenge in front of us? If we are doing that, aren't we escaping from the responsibility? Krishnaji is pointing out that the arranged marriage or love marriage is indifferent. The living in relationship or open relationship or no marriage is not a solution from this family feud. I've met another wonderful young friend. She had a different story to tell. It has nothing to do with economics. She was married to a family of reputation. She lived there in the West with the members of her husband's family. All were modest and up to the point, very sophisticated and etiquette behavior. No fault in the eyes of the world. But she realized 
that they are using her as a good prop in the culture. Using her as a showpiece to hide shortcomings and the morality of the man in the house. She struggled hard to understand the situation. What is actually problem? What is her family? And why there is a lot of discomfort? And even tried her best to convince her parents. Even today, I'm not sure whether she had succeeded because it is very difficult to believe for any parents, friends, because they are only seeing that no, she is well off. Her family has a reputation. She is creating problems. She is not matured enough. Just imagine when these words come from your own parents. Parents like any other adults are living with their own patterns of family life and they are blind. They are not seeing the real life. They are not listening. Isn't that there is no relationship in a family in such a family, each one is just living in their own world, maybe in their own bubble, isolating themselves. But they're all living together in one in a home. I don't know whether I can call that as a home. What you feel related is only as long as the rest see as a non-issue. Either the young adults blindly follow or become rebellious in the family. Is that the reason the youngsters don't want to get into marriage? You come to cities, metro cities, that's what is happening. The marrying age is already, you know, in 30s and 40s. It's no more young people, young couples. Why is this happening? Why more people are moving out of family? There is something fundamentally wrong with the people, you and me, in the families or outside the family, the way we are approaching life. Krishnaji is pointing out different aspects. And today we are just looking at the pointers related to family. But it is up to each one of us to explore further and test it out in our real living, in our own little laboratory that is our family with our kith and kin. Krishnaji never gave any solutions. I think it is because clear answers or solutions are mere words. They have nothing to do with living. And living is relationship. That is possible in a family, extended family, joint family, or cohabitating or cohabiting in this beautiful earth peacefully. Today, I was with such a beautiful family in the morning. That's why I couldn't give morning time. This young girl is a passionate artist, singing, dancing, painting, all that is part of her passion. Parents always allowed her to pursue her interests. Today, after learning from more than a decade, gave a stunning performance. 
I was part of that family watching, witnessing today. The family of around 300 people joined this morning in the celebration of life. There was no expectations. There was no preoccupation. Happy to see the whole families coming together. Joining the journey of this beautiful young member of the family. Isn't it coming together without any agenda is being related. That's just one point I would like to ask. Maybe we can go into this together. Aren't you interested in the dialogue? Thank you. I really would like to have a wonderful dialogue as one beautiful family. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Menon. I think you have covered it very well and placed it beautifully. Uh, I think before I ask somebody else to say something, I would request Dr. Gajanan Rao to make some comments. You know, Krishna used to say that to stand alone is to be related. Yes. I think yeah. that, that, that is the that is the creed to, to relating to each other. Yes, sir. After <laughs> you, Dr. Harshad Pare. I know I have a very difficult subject and um, must say uh, congratulations for me who dealt with it with such clarity slowness, distinct uh, pronunciation of each word. So I couldn't miss even one word of what you were saying. I, I want to interrupt a big discussion. I, all, I agree with all that you were saying, living together, marrying, a very respectable family. All that I have seen in my 85, 86 years of life, so much I have seen in the family, outside the family. As a doctor, you don't know how many parents you meet, young, young uh, uh, married couple. So one of them is waiting for a minute for the other spouse to disappear. They want to say something quickly. What is happening? So, so your uh, words, as you said, a beautiful family getting together. 300 people connected somehow in a place to watch something so beautiful. The girls offer for a presentation of an art she learned for one decade. Hence that uh, the agenda seems to be most important about a family unit. Non-expectation is the next important agenda in a family unit. Judgment is out. Criticism is out. Cynicism is still worse. So we respect each other. In that mutual respect and affection and love, flowers, what is called, if I can call, name it a success of the family. But this is not at all the usual approach. Each mind is different. Each one's thinking is different. And Krishna says, we are all a family in the whole world. How am I different from somebody far north or far south or far away in another country? When you open the skull, <laughs> open the, the chest, the heart, the brain, the liver, and all the internal arrangement, it is the same. So it becomes uh, for the whole human consciousness, as I said, you see, which is a product of the brain, our thinking, our intelligence, so called. So, to be feeling that, that I am the other, that's Krishna's famous thing, I am the other, is a solution to this, but whether we feel it or how we come to feel it, but we open the discussion. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Dr. Bhai, please go ahead. 
Yeah. Are you able to hear my voice? Yes. Thank you, Murli sir. You spoke very, very clearly, and I understood every word, every sentence. I listened carefully, and you have covered uh, very well the topic. Yes. Uh, our philosophy, Indian philosophy of Upanishad, it says, Vasudev Kutumbakam. That means the world is one family. And this is the great idea uh, given from our culture, very ancient culture. And I think we have neglected that because of many reasons. And uh, people actually are feeling very lonely and isolated uh, and living in their own world. So there is no relationship, though there may be a physical relationship like living together in a family or mental relationship like thinking about other people but uh, Krishnaji talks about a different kind of relationship, which is the most challenging kind of relationship in which there are no images about people. Generally, what happens in a family, when we live together, we see the same people every day and we listen to them and uh, many ideas, images are formed in our mind. And then through that image, we look at people, even in the family or in the school or organization. So there is no real relationship because the real relationship is when our mind is fresh and we look without previous knowledge, and we listen, we look very, very carefully as if we are looking for the first time, listening with attention. So Krishnaji talks about a different kind of relationship. The tragedy of human beings is that they cannot live alone because when they are alone, they feel very lonely. They feel lonely because there is no proper living, no real understanding. So people like to live together, but when they live together, then there are conflicts due to all these images, ideas. So the real question is, is it possible to live in the family or in a school or organization, but not form ideas and images about people around and look fresh? And that is the challenge which Krishnamurti is posing for us. And that is a real love, when there is no sense of self, no selfishness, when there is a clarity in looking, listening. So this is possible only when in the family, the parents are interested in what it means to look to listen without forming ideas and images. And it is possible when teachers in a school are able to explain to students what relationship is. Is it based on mutual use? Like that is the way 
society, you give me this and I give you this. So a kind of exchange of gifts and thoughts and feelings, but a real relationship is when there are no expectations. When there is a love which doesn't expect anything from people, and that requires the kind of clarity, a psychological independence, freedom, and that can come only through looking inward and looking at our own mind, how it works in the daily relationship. When we get angry in relationship, we ask, what is this? Or what is this I? Uh, from where does it come? So when teachers, parents are interested in this deeper philosophy of who am I? What is thinking? From where does it come? how it affects our relationship, then there is the possibility of living differently where there is a real relationship. So, okay, I have said enough thing. Uh, we will listen to more people and we will uh, have a good dialogue. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Ashabai. Yes, Kamlesh Ji. Sir, am I audible, sir? Yes, you are. Sir, I want to ask one question to Murli, sir. Sir, what is the role of family in a man's life? Is it, is it necessary to live in the family or is it not necessary to live in the family? Kamaleshi, thank you for asking that question because it's a very, very important question probably. I have so many of my friends who are deeply interested in a religious journey. Our culture also promotes for a religious journey, family can be a hurdle. So I think many, many interesting friends, they quickly see this as an option, quitting the family. But I don't know whether that is right. Because we also have very interesting religious people in the history. And of course, some of us would have you know, met them. They are in the family. They are doing whatever little thing for sustenance. I think it's a beautiful word, you know, upajivanam. That means livelihood is always secondary. There is something else in living. But I think this is completely misunderstood. Maybe it is never yes. brought into the education, brought into the culture in the family. I don't think anybody can live alone in that sense, not Krishnaji's words, isolating from the world around. You are the tree, you are the people around you, you are the animal, you are everything around you. You can't run away from where you are or what is. I think it's a profound teaching what Kay had suggested. Sometimes family happen. Now for most of us, I think that is what has happened. Let me explain. We are born to some family. Our parents, with their own limitation, take us through, educate us, then arrange for a marriage, or we fall in love. 
and then we invite another person into our life this is what happens or sometimes you know rimpoche ji it seems sam dong rimpoche ji on his personal conversation he was sharing in the study center that he asked krishna ji sir should i leave all these things the robes the ashrams the monk hood then krishna ji immediately said it seems no no sir it is not for you because he never knew what it is because at the age of 4 he was you know put in an ashram so he he has no clue what is happening so i am not sure whether leaving family or being in family is really matters but is there a different way of living wherever one is because we are interdependent we need somebody around us we can't just isolate ourselves uh, i think we be, we are already sick we will become more sick i hope i have answered gajanan ji you wanted to say something please go ahead <laughs> I, your point was good living differently wherever you live whatever you do with full understanding will be the point when we the gentleman with the lungi and slippers they are very good <laughs> can you see on the screen <laughs> well anyway i want to say something funny but very serious and it has to do with krishna would believe or not i don't know but there is one witness to it which kk is still around you ask him after uh, lunch very often wasn't they were her, some kind of a discussion followed lunch with krishna ji there when he was alive like i but a few times i had occasion to say but that particular day this matter came up i was not in the lunch at the end of the lunch a long discussion i don't know about what i find achit patwar dinji coming running along the path within the campus and i remember he met kk and said kk we are both wrong krishna ji after a long discussion was actually forced to utter that grahastha is nearer salvation or realization than a sanyas <laughs> it was a joke and not a very serious krishna wouldn't say that just like that he had to take an along a long path and people asked him why <clears throat> so that was this i don't know what he meant and what it meant and as uh, fari fari must know about how to be with a family or without a family yes he has the answer that's why he is what he is i don't know but uh, but then Vasudeva Kutumbakam, I don't know. Vasudeva was the first person who married and brought about a, a family, sir. After him, Parikshit. What does Vasudeva Kutumbakam mean? Sir, it is basically the yeah. earth itself. Ah, yes, sir. sir. Vasuda Vasuda means the earth itself. Oh, I see. Anyway, the Vasudeva was there, no? Uh, Or yeah. Um. May I say something? Yes, please. Once I was talking with students yeah. in Rishi Valley in a yeah. culture class, yeah, and I was telling the story of Buddha, Gautam yeah. Buddha, yeah, and I told them that Buddha left the family, yeah, to meditate in the forest to get some real clarity. and one girl said buddha was selfish i said why do you say he was selfish so she said if buddha wanted to leave home he should not have married so this girl was thinking about buddha's wife and child because they would miss buddha understand so uh, i think that 
this is what we understand uh, from the society that this family is our main relationship. But people who are advanced, they are going beyond the family. They can relate to people whom they don't know, even to people of different religion, different nationality, because that real relationship is not through knowledge. And that is probably Buddha wanted that kind of relationship, that kind of understanding in which there is no such narrowness as my family and his family, because that is what is happening. And even within the family, my idea versus your idea. And I met one family, one husband and wife in Chennai, and they both were very highly educated people and uh, very articulate, and they had problem about a simple problem. And they were making it more complicated because the wife was saying, why should I do it? It is your responsibility. And the husband was saying, uh, why can't you do it? And they go on discuss. I think there is some problem with Harshad Bhai's audio. Harshad, sir, your audio is not coming, sir. Can he hear what you are saying? Sir, is, there, is, there should be some problem with his internet, sir. I think so. Yes, it yeah. could be. Could be. So this, this, but uh, still he is in the net. Punjas, yeah, 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 I am saying, sir. Somebody else can. Yeah, yeah, I am saying. I am saying. Yeah. Draw, I am saying. Okay, so I think it went off and now I am losing that, what I was saying. But basically, as long as there is a sense of me, there is a sense of you, and there is a duality, and the conflict, me and the world. So people have really gone very deeply into you are the world. That kind of feeling, that is the real relationship. That you are not separate from the world. And what separates us is our thinking, our knowledge. So that is what Krishnaji's challenge is whether we can we look, can we listen without that knowledge coming into and interfering, and then we have a real relationship, not the relationship of give and take of a business relationship. Okay, I have finished. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ashadha. I think Harshad Bhai has summed up very well that, you know, our, in our relationship, so long there is self, whether it is our relationship with nature, with a human being, or with our ideas, or property, or whatever, it's bound to create conflicts. So even though we are going to have a certain view on everything that on earth, but can we hold that very loosely? and is still find time and space to listen to the other person. That is very important. Yes, Jan Sab wants to say something. Shishildi, unmute. Jan Sab, unmute. Jan Sab, please unmute yeah. yourself. Yeah. yeah, I am unmuting. You want to say something? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely. <laughs> That's nice. You. <laughs> You can't get out of it. You can't get out of it. You can't get out of it. 
you can get bird out of cage, but you cannot get cage out of bird. Okay. You can out get cage. Yeah. You can get bird out of cage, but yeah. you cannot get cage out of bird. Oh. Okay. That what matters. If you are associated with that case, you yourself can get rid of case. The physical case you can get rid of with the help of someone else. But but the actual case you can have to you will have to remove yourself case from yourself. That is the meaning. That is important. Perhaps. Present made by you. Hmm. Mentally, yeah, you're saying you have to come out of it. Yes. The family may be a case to you. You can get out of that. That he he doesn't have a family. Pariksha doesn't have a family. That's all. I right. live with family. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I am. I am living with my brother and uh, his family. Is that a case? Is that a case to you? No. That that what I am meaning is that you yeah. cannot be in case. Case is always within you. Yes. You yes. Yourself is a case. Whatever Dobesa was saying, the same thing. Mm -hmm. If you are out of me, no problem. If me is there, there is a problem. There is a case. Mm -hmm. Me is the yes, case, sir. basically. Only, only I would like to say in this regard what Krishnaji repeats every time. My wife, my husband, my this, my that, as he said, uh, come out of self, it always can label and disappear. That life is smooth. If at anybody with a label disappear, we are one. Because of the identity we take on, uh, I feel my age, my experience, I have a right to command my son. He may not think it is right. He has his own idea. So I am a father, the label I carry, I am a father, you are a son. However old you are, you are still a son, you know less. So all these differences uh, develop because the label I attach to another, the label they see me through. Yes, Kamlesh ji wants to say something. Sir, uh... It means that uh, identification and attachment are the two great problems with the relationship uh, which is limiting in the family, what Murli Miran sir has, has suggested after reading K, K from the commentary of living. Is it, is it okay, sir, Murli sir? Sir, you are unmute. Sir, please yes, unmute. sir. Please go ahead. Sir, only the problem is that one has to see all his uh, developments and uh, movements with uh, his family, because family supports a person in a, in many ways. Uh, family gives him the support which he is not able to do at certain stages of life. So one has to see many things in his self knowing itself, whether he is attached, he is dependent, or uh, he is identified with something. That is what I, I want to say only this much. Murli sir, do you want to say something on this, sir? <clears throat> yeah, it will be wonderful if we can, um, you know, go into this. Uh, thank you, uh, you know, for initiating that. You know, one is what Kay had very uh, beautifully words. Another is my own understanding of it and the way I am living. I think he had used the words several occasions, um, you know, to avoid probably the uh, monotony of it. So he, he is saying To me, the attachment has been, you know, a heavily loaded word. 
And identification probably is, an, is a very interesting word now, uh, very well used all over the world again. So we are all very good at understanding the meaning of it. We can you know, exchange, um, communicate what we want to say. But I think Krishnaji wanted us to live. Krishnaji said, throw out the books. He, he said that K is dead, gone. How will you live? What will you say to a person who is coming, who has not read K, who is, has no understanding? What will you say to him? So I think there is a lot more discovery to be made in our family life. I think it was the same challenge as a teacher. The way he pointed out, it looks like you know you have to have um, liberation, then start teaching. No, you can't do that. You have to teach, you have to live in the family, you have to face the challenges as it comes. So K seems to be really, you know, avoiding any answers to that. He just want to, you know, challenge each one of us. How are you living in your family? We need to have somebody. Uh, you, otherwise, we will be in a cave. So none of us are, you know, joining from a cave. So we are living in a family. We have people around us. What is actually happening in our daily living? Is there a problem? What is that problem? What is the root cause of that problem? So one way it is very quickly can be answered as attachment or identification. But is there more than that? Or they are just, you know, words, pointers. I, I see this is as a great challenge, day after day. And I don't think anybody can provide any solution. And living in that way, there's a great discovery. It, I think it is our excuses, you know. If I was like... Uh, them, it would have been different. No, there is no them and uh, you know me there. Each situation is unique. Each you know uh, challenge is unique. It demands a tremendous attention, life energy. Is it possible to live and uh, bring that joy? I think that's a big challenge. Krishnaji alone is, you know, answering it in that way without giving any answer. Whereas all over the world, people are quick with answers, methods, solutions. I, I don't know, uh, Kamalishji, uh, why not we just invite more people? Let us really go into this. Is it possible to live beautifully in our family? today, every day, whatever may be the challenge. I pause. <clears throat> may I say something? Yes, yes sir. Yes. Uh, Krishnaji has said the very desire to be secure in a relationship that destroys security. So if we think that marriage and family will make us secure, probably security doesn't come from outside, psychological security. It comes when we understand ourselves, can see clearly 
what is happening within us and can watch it. Uh, and that requires a freedom to watch. So again, uh, Krishna Ji says that the freedom is at the beginning. How do you watch? So all this thing, uh, people have not really looked carefully before marriage. And they have some idea that once you get married and live together, and even if you love each other, they think that it will continue like that forever. But it is not like that. Um, relationship is a very, very lively. Uh, it changes. Our mind changes very, very quickly. So people who have love marriage, within few months, they begin to feel, many of them, that the life is not what they really wanted. So there is a conflict starts when you live together uh, in a family. So freedom, only when people are really free, two people, say a man and a woman, they are free both psychologically, then they can live together without any problem. Otherwise, marriage is like a one leg of a man is tied to one leg of a woman and they have to walk. So they have to walk in synchronism. If either man or the woman goes ahead, they will fall. So it's very, very uh, difficult to live happily in a marriage relationship when husband and wife they are not moving at the same pace with the same psychological understanding. And that is why marriage becomes a problem. And we read it in the newspaper every day. It really complicates life much more than being alone. OK, I finish. Thank you, Mr. Black. Yeah. yeah. Dubey sir, I like to hear more from you. Yes, you have been a director of a huge place of several families living together, children, their parents. What did you make out? As, as, uh, as Murali says, is there no answer at all? You don't become a Krishna ji. Let us know something from you, positive. Pradeep ji, you want to say something, Mr. Pradeep Verma? Yeah, Pradeep is not here, yes. He must be there, but not here. Either. Okay, I, I think um, um, just to keep this going, you know, I have seen very interesting people. Um, I have I an have uncle. He married and then they had no issues. And suddenly found that his spouse, my aunt, sometimes goes into depression, sometimes goes into a kind of a mania. You can't do anything, you know, sometimes it is a medical case. Maybe, you know, if you are not alert, this can happen to any one of us. But he was there to take care of her till her end. You know, there'll be some time she will be cursing him. She will be um, telling everything he does is not right. That, then there is another phase where she just comes into his room. He starts uh, doing things for him. 
I think this is an extreme case. If we can live with such extreme cases, I have seen a man living in that kind of an extreme case without complaints. Is it possible to see that the kids and kin, neighbors and friends around us, they may err, they may say something which is not appropriate. Is it possible for us to listen to them, not quickly react? Is it possible to find out in that listening something dynamic, you know, something, an action? Is, is it possible? I think there is no other way. Sometimes children, sometimes your relatives, sometimes your neighbors, sometimes your employer, employee, anybody can be, you know, it's a sick society, as Krishnaji said. And we are insane people. How will we really live with sanity? And uh, it starts from me, it starts from, you know, where I live. <laughs> it's a tremendous challenge. And can you live beautifully with vitality, with uh, uh, tremendous uh, um, energy? You know, it's not avoiding, it is not withdrawing, it is not blaming, it is not, um, you know, looking for solutions. Krishnaji seems to be asking this question. I, I think Krishnaji is not a um, single person at all. To me, I am in Valley School because of Krishnaji. It is his place. But he had just kept it open for anybody. He had invited all those people who want to experiment what he said. And he lived... I heard, you know, somebody telling Krishnaji was in the dining room of Rishi Valley. So a guest was invited for lunch. So Krishnaji was waiting for her to take the plate and serve. Then she said, Krishnaji, I am a guest. He said, uh, it seems, yeah, I am also a guest, but staying here a little longer than you. <coughs> You know, it's, it's beautiful. I, I think that Krishnaji had made this whole planet his home. Wherever he went, he lived as a guest and related. He just showed us through living, it is possible. But we feel that we, we are related only if we marry. We are related only to our children. We are related only to the members who are maternal or paternal side. But without using any traditional words, he was truly a global personality. And the entire earth was his home. This is what I feel. Having seen him, having heard him, isn't it our responsibility to live so beautifully, owning nothing? Is that aloneness? Everything is me, everything is mine, everything is, there is no other. It's such a fantastic, you know, pointer he had said. Is it possible? I pause. Pradeep Ormaji. Hello. It's a, such a complicated <clears throat> issue, very complicated. Whatever is actually happening in the present day living is a reality. So this is what is whatever is actually happening in the present day living is a reality. We have dormant hungers and potentials leading us to different ends. 
how to harmonize is the great challenge. How to harmonize is the great challenge. How to live beautifully. Because beauty, beauty, the sense of beauty is inherent in us differently in different people. This is what I understand. Because in contemplative photography, if you see then everything, even a broken piece of um, uh, pottery can be very beautiful to a person. Likewise, beauty is inherent in each one of us and differs greatly. We cannot have something, of course, man cannot live alone. So it appears that family, this should, why the problem has come to this level, we have to see that. Because the economic freedom to most of us in families, the, the manifestation of our inner desires, there is a possibility, greater possibility. So we see that this is what is happening. If we put an ideal that it should be like this, it should be beautiful according to whom? One power reader's autofocus, the innovative reading glasses. Is, this, is, this is what, because beauty very, in a family, whether everybody looks at things with the same sense of beauty. So we are, some people are lucky enough to have this, but then as an ideal, we cannot frame anything. This is what I, it's a, it's a very complicated issue for me. Thank you very much. That's why I was keeping quiet because I was just mulling over all those things and still there is no conclusion or solution and insanity when JK is talking about, there is a reason for that. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. I think it's uh, just about time we can close now, I think. Yes, definitely, sir. No problem in closing it. Yes. There is no maternal, paternal uncle here. We are all families. <laughs> okay. Is there anyone anyone related here? Sir, we, we are we are all related. Jenta, uh, we are we are all related related members of uh, the whole whole uh, unit of the world itself. Uh, yeah, that, our, that's our world true. is this. We live in the world. World lives in us. World yes, lives sir. in us. Yes, sir, yes, that Maharaj replied to a question. He took a alpin and made a hole in a paper and yes. he said, this hole is of paper. Everybody said, no, it is not of paper, but it is in paper. Everybody mm -hmm. said, yes, it is in paper. So one should live here, but, you, but the world should not live in you. That is the solution. You should live in family, but family should not live in you. That is what I understand it. I don't know some other understanding if somebody can share. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm interested in adding a little more. Actually, I did mention during my presentation. Great, great. Uh, for us, the solar system or the, you know, America um, or uh, North Indian uh, food doesn't matter really. Our world is so small. Our kit and kin, but we talk a lot about other things, but they are just verbal uh, you know, exchanges. But the real world for us, what pains us is my family, my you know, kith and kin. Why we have made that as a special cell? Why are we living like that? It is not outside, it is inside our head. Is it really possible to see this point? I, I think K, uh, K seems to be suggesting it is what you can bring any kind of changes outwardly, but that's not going to solve the issue. So what is this relationship? We are just blindly thinking, you know, family, blood relations, all that is just uh, attachment. It's a conditioning. And 
this, this is our school, this is our classroom, this is our teaching, this is our study center. Can we live? Can we bring you know, more people to see this point? Otherwise, our families are disintegrating. You know, they just want to live together. Today with one person, tomorrow with another person, day after tomorrow with another person, and the children will suffer. That, that's what the world is going ahead, sir. Our, our own, you know, young uh, family members getting educated to know this. They are just talking that it is biology. They are just talking that it is, uh, it's a freedom. What will we say to them? Let me pause. I think it's a huge challenge that Mr. Menon has pointed out. It's, it's important for all of us to be aware of these issues in our daily living. And uh, whatever comes before us, whether through thinking or experiencing or watching, am I aware of what, what is happening? That should be very, very important also. I think with these words, I want to close this. And want to thank thank Mr. Mudlivinan for bringing such a stimulating talk. Uh, I hope that in future also Mr. Menon will be kind enough to come and help us. And I want to announce the next talk, which is on next Sunday at 11 a.m. It will be by Dr. Gajanan Rao. And the theme is Teachings in Daily Living. So you're all welcome to join us next Sunday, which is 22nd at 11 o'clock, 11 a.m. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much, Dubai, sir. Thank, Thank no you. No relationship is again a relationship. Please end it with that. Okay, sir. Thank you.